Hello and welcome to this course overview for IB Computer Science in the Diploma Programme. Okay, it's time to choose your options and you're thinking about studying IB Computer Science, but why? Why should you study IB Computer Science? Well, if I read this to you, in today's tech-driven world, computer science is very, very popular. The IB Computer Science course gives you a deep understanding of both theory and practice, setting up for a great tech career, if that's what you choose to do. Studying in computer science in school boosts your problem solving and logical thinking skills. The IB course focuses on solving real world problems, coding and software development, giving you important skills. But with high demand for engineering and tech experts, IB computer science helps you get ready for those jobs and teaches you skills that are useful in many areas. As Bill Gates said, it's an exciting time to study computing with endless possibilities. The IB Computer Science course gives you a complete understanding of computer science, mixing theory and practical, as we've just said. It's split into three parts, the core, the option, and the IA, the internal assessment. So in the core system, you learn system fundamentals, computer organization, networks, and computational thinking. This covers the basics like hardware, software, programming, and data structure. Now in the options unit, this lets you specialize in one of four areas, databases, uh, modeling and simulation, web science or object-oriented programming. Historically, most students do pick databases because it's useful for many, many jobs. And then finally, the IA, the internal assessment, counts for 20% of your grade and involves solving a real world problem with programming. It's a chance to apply what you've learned in a hands-on project. The content of the syllabus, and in particular the current model, which started in 2014 and runs up till 2026, um, that would be the last exam for this uh, particular model, from next year, 2025, there will be a brand new syllabus. And of course that takes two years to run through. And then in 2027, then there will be a new set of exams. But for now, the core components, standard level and higher level, we've got topic one, topic two, topic three, and topic four. Okay, and they're running for 80 hours. We've got an extension for the higher level, which is topic five, six, and seven. And that's another 45 hours. And then we've got the case study again for the higher level, which is 30 hours. Okay, option units, again, 30 hours for standard level. We've got databases, modeling and simulation, web science, object-oriented programming, 30 hours for standard level, and then 30 hours plus an additional 15 for higher level. There is an internal assessment um, for both standard level and higher level, okay, and a group four project, and that's 10 hours there. So total teaching hours for standard level will be 150, total teaching hours for higher level would be 240. So that's the current model, but here we go. We've got the assessment, standard level assessment. The external assessment for standard level is two and a half hours. Paper one, an hour and 30 minutes. 70% of the final mark. So the external examinations for standard level are two papers, um, which makes one paper one, one hour and 30 minutes, paper two, an hour. As you can see here, paper two, 25%, paper one, 45%. And this is 70% of the overall course. No calculators are allowed. And there's the internal assessment, which makes up the other 30%. Now for higher level, four hours and 30 minutes, paper one, two hours and 10 minutes, paper two, an hour and 20 minutes. And then we've got a paper three, yeah, which consists of four compulsory questions based on the pre-scene case study, which we'll come on to later. Paper three, which will last one hour. Again, no calculators are used for um, higher level. Internal assessment, this time 20%. Okay, consisting of 40 hours, 30 hours for the solution of your internal assessment and 10 hours for a group project. Now the new diploma course for computer science will be launched in February, 2025. Okay, for first teaching in August, 2025. The first assessments, as I've said before, will take place in May 2027. This is broken down into two parts. A, concepts of computer science, and B, computational thinking and problem solving. Some of the topics will remain the same, as you can see here. And it's broken down into similar teaching hours, 150 and 240. Standard level, two hours and 30 minutes, paper one and paper two, high level, four hours. Okay, and then the internal assessment, here we go both 35 hours, 30% 30, 30 of the final mark for standard level, 20% of the final mark for higher level. Okay, watch this space, but if you are starting the diploma program in 2024, August 2024, then you'll be on the older specification. If you're doing it next year, 
2025, and then you'll be on the new specification, the grading system. Okay, the course is graded out of seven points. Like other IB subjects, you can also earn extra points for theory of knowledge, TOK, and the extended essay. Your grade is made up of two parts, the external assessment, 80%, and the internal assessment, 20%. The external assessment includes two written exams. Paper one covers core topics, and paper two, as we've just said, is about your chosen option topic. Higher level students also take paper three, which tests more advanced core topics and computational thinking. The internal assessment, the IA, is a programming project where you solve a real world problem and write a report about it. This project shows your practical computer science skills. The grade boundaries can change each year, but generally scoring 85% or higher will get you a level seven, the highest grade. So what is the difference then? In summary, both standard level and higher level IB computer science students learn similar skills, but higher level students cover more advanced topics and study them in greater detail. High level students also have to do a special case study and more challenging work in the chosen option. The main difference between standard level and higher level is that higher level goes deeper and covers more material. High level students have 240 hours of class time, while standard level students have 150 hours. Again, just to recap, there are four topics, system fundamentals, computer organizations, networks, and computational thinking, problem solving, and programming. There is one optional unit, where you choose either databases, modeling and simulation, web science, or object-oriented programming. And there's one piece of internally assessed work, the IA, which includes a computational solution. And again, to recap, the high level course has three additional elements, three further topics, abstract data structures, resource management, and control. There's also additional and more demanding content for the option you select, and an additional external assessed component based on pre-seen case study of an organization or scenario. This requires students to research various aspects of the subject, which may include new technical concepts and additional subject content in greater depth. Okay, so let's have a little look at the syllabus, 80 hours. Okay. As we've said before, topic one, system fundamentals, 20 hours. Okay, broken down into two parts, systems in organization and system design basics. And then we have topic two, computer organization, which is only six hours. As you see, there's one unit. The same for networks, topic three, nine hours, and it's only one area of study. Computational thinking, problem solving, and programming is 45 hours. It's broken down into three component parts, 10 hours, general uh, principles, connecting computational thinking and program design, and then introduction to programming, 13 hours. The additional 45 hours in the higher level extension, we've got topic five, abstraction data structures, 23 hours. Okay, topic six, resource management, eight hours, and control, 14 hours, making grand total of 45 hours for those three additional topics. The options, we've got databases, we've got modeling and simulation, we've got web science, and we've got object-oriented programming, 30 hours at standard level, 45 hours for the higher level. And if we look at databases, broken down into three parts, but a fourth part, you can see there the extra 15 hours if you are doing higher level. Okay, basic concepts, the relational database model, further aspects of database management, further database models and database analysis. Okay, for part B, we've got modeling simulation. Again, broken down into three parts, but then there's an additional 15 hours of study for the, um, for the higher level. Computational modeling and simulation added to that. The basic model, simulations and visualization. We then move on to web science which is broken down into four units plus an additional two, creating the web, searching the web, distributing approaches to the web, the evolving web, analyzing the web, and the intelligent web. And then finally, object-oriented programming, split into three parts, similar to option A and option B, objects as a programming concept, features of OOP, program development, and advanced development. Okay, the external assessment. Two different methods are used to assess students. Detailed mark schemes specific to each examination paper and mark bands. For paper one and two, there are mark schemes. For paper three, there are mark bands and mark schemes. The mark bands related to the assessment objectives established for the computer science course and the group four grade descriptions. The mark schemes are specific to each examination. You'll take paper one, which, has a, which is an hour and a half, maximum mark 70, weighting 45%. This is a standard level. The purpose of the paper is to assess the student's ability to demonstrate the following objectives in relation to the syllabus. Number one, 
know and understand. Number two, apply and use. Number three, construct, analyze and evaluate. Again, sticking with paper one, section A, 30 minutes approximately, consists of several compulsory short answer questions testing mainly objectives one and two. The maximum max of this section is 25. Some of the questions are common to this paper and the higher level paper one in section A. Section B, 60 minutes approximately, consists of three compulsory structured questions that may be subdivided. The maximum mark for this section is 45. Some questions may be common to this paper and the higher level paper one, section B. Okay, so there is some crossover with the standard and the higher level. The number of marks for each part will be given on the paper and is linked to the common term used. This will indicate to students the depth of the response required. Okay, paper two for standard level, duration an hour, maximum marks 45, weighting 25%. Again, the assessment we need to know and understand, apply and use, construct, analyze and evaluate. Okay, so what does that consist of? Students are required to answer all the questions for the option chosen. The questions are common to this paper and higher level paper two, section A. Students are not expected to construct code, for the following options, databases, modeling, and simulation or web science, but students will be expected to interpret and or construct code in Java in the OOP option. The external assessment for higher level runs for over four and a half hours. Paper one has a duration of two hours and 10 minutes. Maximum marks are 100 and the weighting is 40%. Again, the purpose of the paper is to assess the student's ability to demonstrate the following objectives in relation to the syllabus. No one understand. Number one, two, apply and use, three, construct, analyze and evaluate. Okay, similar to the standard level, 30 minutes for section A, consisting of several compulsory short answer questions, testing mainly objective one and two. Maximum max for this section is 25. Now paper two, a duration of an hour and 20 minutes, maximum max 65, weighting 20%. Okay, again, we're looking at know and understand, apply and use, construct, analyze, and evaluate. Objectives one, two, and three. Okay, section A, and it's common questions for standard level and higher level, 45 marks. Section B, 20 marks. Okay, consists of questions from the options chosen related to the higher level extension. Students are not expected, as before, to construct code for, for these chosen option units, but um, to construct Java code if they've chosen the object-oriented programming option. Paper three takes one hour, max max 30%, it's weighting at 20% of the final mark. The paper is based on a case study produced annually by the IB and available on the OCC. Okay, so a clean copy of the case study must be downloaded by the IB coordinator and issued to students with their examination paper. Paper three, again, follows the same three objectives. Know and understand, apply and use, construct, analyze, evaluate, and formulate. Paper does consist of four structured questions which assess the whole syllabus in an integrated way. Students are required to answer all of the questions. The questions related to the scenario in the case study. In addition to the case study, further stimulus material may be provided in the examination paper. And just an overview for the case study. The case study is a valuable part of the IB Computer Science course that ties everything together. High level students get this case study 12 months before their May exam or 18 months before the November exams to research it in detail. This research helps prepare for higher level paper three, which is 20%, as I've said before, of the final grade. The case study involves a scenario about current developments or issues in computer science. It introduces new technology concepts and gives students a chance to dive deeper into these topics. Okay, you see, you've seen how the course is broken down in terms of external and internal assessments, case studies, so on and so forth. But is the IB computer science difficult? Is it hard? Well, again, like everything else, it depends on your experience and interest in the subject. A survey showed that 36% of students found it moderately challenging, while 42% thought it was quite difficult, quite hard. In 2022, the average grade for computer science high level was 5.26, and for economics, 5.10. So about the same. For beginners, topics like abstract data structures and resource management can be tricky, but with practice, these topics become easier to handle. The course includes a practical project that counts for 20% of your grade, which involves programming. Okay, if you're not strong in maths, the algorithm and computational thinking part might be tough, 
Overall, the difficulty in IB computer science depends on how comfortable you are with coding and mathematics. Despite the challenge, many students find the skills and rewards worth it. In 2021, about 20% 20 of the students got the top score of seven in both higher level and standard level computer science exams. Okay, so in conclusion, the IB Computer Science course helps you understand computational thinking and problem solving, setting you up for many future careers. I am hoping the video explains the syllabus, structure and grading, and gives you the tools for success. Whether you're interested in programming, cybersecurity, or big data, IB Computer Science is a great start for your digital future. This might be controversial to some of you, but the most important part isn't the grades, but the knowledge and skills that you gain. Okay. So here's an example, just a question from the first, very first topic, standard level and higher level. Identify two features that need to be considered when planning a new computer system for an organization. Now the length and depth I would be expected for this is gonna be something like this. Two features, integration with current resources, again, we're explaining that, and ethical and social impact, okay? And then finally, we're looking to draw some kind of conclusion to sort of summarize what we've written. Here are the two points. This explains the two points, and this is showing our understanding relating back to the question. So that's it for this video. Thank you very much indeed for watching. And if you choose computer science, I will see you in further videos. Thank you very much indeed for watching. Bye for now. Please continue to ask questions, leave your comments, hit notifications, and please subscribe. And finally, if you wish to buy me a coffee, I would be truly grateful. Please visit buymeacoffee.com forward slash learning zone. Thank you very much indeed. See you next time. Bye for now.